Hello, everybody. I'm here to talk about how we can make better error messages using CLI package. The reason why I'm talking about this is I'm part of the Tidy Models team, which is a collection of packages for modeling and machine learning using Tidy Models principles. I am one of four full-time engineers working on that project and we throw a lot of errors. In fact, I did a, a count of some of the beta packages we have and all in all, just the abort calls from Arlang used to have over a thousand just in 12 of our packages and we have between 40 and 50 packages right now. This will this covers the majority of the pat of the packages we have, but we still have a lot to go through. And I like to think that the user, when using our packages, needs to follow a happy path. And let, here we see one such path. But an important part about coding on a happy path is that if you stray away from the path, you're able to look back on it as soon as possible. So you can go back into the right flow. And this would be something as simple as having the documentation to make sure that people, if they start, know how to get on start and names and arguments make sense. But another big thing is the use of error messages error messages that come out if they do something wrong or something unexpected happens. So the happy path on this picture we see right here isn't actually that happy because if you fall to the left, you have a very hard time getting back on the path. And I like to think of that as this style of error message that we've all seen that doesn't say anything. It's something bad happened, but it doesn't tell you what to do how is that better? This is the example of the thing of the happy path as seen in this picture, where we're not helping you at all. So I like to think that helpful error messages that give you everything you need at the right time is the same way as adding dart rails to our path. This still lets you do Everything is to you to go from A to B, you have beautiful scenery, but we are trying to help you um, stay on the happy path, do what you need to do at all times. All right, so I'm using the CLI package and it can do a lot. So uh, it CLI, short for domain like interface, and it gives you a much rich collection of functions and functionalities to create things in the domain line interface. So the, the text output in your tonsil. And it can do things like lists and headers and paragraph, and it can do all these things with styling and theming. We can do rules and trees and all these different things. And it can do so much more than just what I'll be talking about today. And I'll just be focusing on the error messages, but we can do it for anything else. We also used it in making really nice print methods for some of our objects. And if you're familiar with Arlang that has the abort function, you can essentially replace most of those Arlang abort calls with a CLI, a CLI underscore abort call. And they function almost identically. There's a few edge cases you might run into. So um, one of the things you can do, so this isn't CLI specific, this is a thing that came with the Arlang idea, is the, is the idea about passing calls around. So here we have a small example of, a, a rather like simple example. So we have the user facing function that takes in ads. Then we have an internal chatter that makes sure that the values are all positive or non-negative. And then it takes the square root. It doesn't really matter what it does. The idea is we have data coming in, 
they will do some chatting on it. And if it passes it, it goes on to do something. When you normally write this, we did the following error message below where it says error in internal chatter and then the error message was sent. But this error, we have the name of the internal chatter in the error message and that it's better than nothing, but it still is a little confusing, especially for new people coming in. Like they might not know what it is and maybe we didn't have a good name for the internal function. Like here, it's just called internal chatter. It doesn't at all tell you where the error is. Especially if you have a really bad infrastructure of functions in functions and functions, it can be an error that happens all the way down somewhere and you don't quite know what it is. We see it a little bit in, if you're familiar with the tidy models, we create a workflow with like some recipes and some positive models. And then we tune those inside a white flow. And then maybe the error is coming out from somewhere in one of the recipes functions, but it's happening when we are calling a tune function. So it's nice to be able to know where it's from and we can't do that right now. But we can do it if you pass the call around. So the main difference we see here is the internal function. Here have we added a call argument and to that, we passed in the, the Arlang caller and function. So essentially what's happening here is when we run into this exception and it prints out the error message, instead of using the tolling environment of the internal chatter, it is using that tolling environment, which is the next function up which here is the user-facing function. So we have a nicer interface. And of course, if we have these nested multiple layers deep, we could pass this tall object around. So the tolling environment will be the one that the people use. This is one simple way of adding information to the user that they really need. Another thing we can do with the CLI function is the idea of glue interpolation. So this is a little bit the same way as by pasting things around, but instead of pasting in a, a comma separated sequence, we here use these curly brackets. So now we have updated the error message here. So we said ads must be positive, not and then curly bracket adds. So what will happen when this is run is it takes the value and, inter and interpolates it in. So the value we put in was minus five. So curly bracket adds is being replaced by minus five. So we can not only say something went wrong, but we can also say what was wrong. We can say, oh, it needs to be something, something. It, we, this is... Here's a very silly example, but it can become very useful later on to be able to say, oh, the fifth value was negative and it was minus two. And then it's easy for the user to be like, oh, let's go back and find the value in the input that was minus two. And this is where the error was, instead of just saying something's wrong. And the last nicety around the CLI is it also has this idea of inline test formatting, where we already had the curly brackets, but if we add this almost like class name, so dot art dot bat, there's a lot of different ones you can find in documentation. We can denote here that adds is an argument and the interpolated value from earlier, we're seeing as a value. So that gives you a, a standardized values about how to style different things across everything. Um, the way we write these functions while we think about errors is mostly like this. The data comes in at the top and we have a series of, of chats. It can be one, it can be more than one. And then at the end, we do something. Um, and we saw a little bit for, this is the same as this, where if we have a lot of chats, we can pull them out into an, like a standalone chat here. So 
we separate what everything does. And with that, we have some priorities of how we write these functions. So the first one is that ideally we should throw the error as early as possible. So if we need to know it needs to be positive, check it right away instead of doing a bunch of things and then do it before it's used. So plus that gives you that helps the user that bad into swing of things. Maybe you have a function that needs a value, but also needs to connect to a database. If you know the value needs to be a string, check it's a string before you connect to the database, because that takes some time so you can get bad as fast as possible. The chat itself, which is what we have here inside at the if statement, plus all, everything is this if statement, and then if it's true, we throw the error. The chat inside the if should ideally calculate as fast as possible. It should just detect, did the error, are we wrong or not? Because then once we're in, we can say, okay, now we know it's wrong. Then we can find out all the different places it's wrong and construct the error that's informative. And this allows the toll for when it doesn't error to run as fast as possible. So I'll be showing uh, three different examples of how we improved some of the error messages in tidy models using the CLI framework, which has tend to do a lot more than I'm showing right now. And we're seeing a little bit of what we can do. So here we have our old error message. If we run the following toad, um, we did this can rename variables in this time test, which it has words, but it doesn't at all say what. It does, it's very unclear why we throw an error right here. With our new error message, we're explaining why. And by saying that this function doesn't use the estimate argument, it needs to be specified just in the dots that are named argument. And we're even saying how to fix the error. So here we, we specify the tolerable without the estimate equals. And the way we're dealing with this is that then somewhere in a toad somewhere where we have an if statement and here we're doing some fancy things to we're dating the tall and we are doesn't expand the dots, we pull out the dots. Um and we do the names. So basically if the the dots are named and estimate is in there, which it isn't supposed to be, then we throw the error. And what we're passing to the abort thing is here actually a named vector. So we have the different elements are named. So here one of them is named ads and one of them is named I. And we can see this in this, the left hand symbol on the thing. So ads is like the big red ads and the I is this little blue eye. So there's a table of shorthands for like ads, I, and exclamation point. So, because we don't want everything to be like red error all around, it's like, oh, here's the error, and then a little I, how to fix it. And we are passing the tall through because this is in a helper function. Another problem a lot of you have probably seen before is the idea of exhausting the, the memory. <laughs> we have. So this is an example where if we're trying, we're using recipes to create dummy variables, but the variable we're creating dummy variables of has a hundred thousand unique values, but it's just territory representation of the numbers one through hundred thousand, which would be a really big matrix. It's like a hundred thousand times a hundred thousand values. That's way too bad. But the error we did bad comes from like inside a base R function that says vector memory exhausted, limit reached, question mark. So we don't get the error coming out saying, hey, this is the way the function is. So if this was inside another function you used, it would be hard to know why this came out unless you need under remembers this error. Another little wrinkle in this error is that it's 
operating system specific. So it will look different if you're on Windows than if you're not on Windows. Our new era uses CLI. We say it's coming from step dummy. We it comes with the and it now says that it contains too many levels. We're saying how many levels it had. And then we're explaining that it creates, it would have resulted in a data frame that was too large. Um, here we're doing something a little bit more advanced because we are using model matrix to deal, try to create these dummy variables. And if it doesn't work, I want to throw the error instead because I want to reframe it. So we're using this try attach statement at the top with the expression in it. And if that expression doesn't error, nothing happens. It just is pipe, it just did assign to indicators. But if there is an error, then that error that's pumped into this function right here. And what we do is we take this condition, which is the error, because the error is an object by itself. And I'm doing some regular expression on the message to see does it contain the words beta memory or cannot allocate. If that happens, then I pull out the number of levels and then create a call just as we've seen before. And if it can't find that, it will just let the error message through as normal. So it's foolproof in a way of light. If these words appeared, we replace them with my warning or my error. But if it can't find it, it just moves along like normal. And you might have noticed here it says tall equals null. It's because recipes itself is doing something a little bit fancy about how to identify who throws the error. So we have to specify it here. And our last example here is also from recipes. So the old error right here said you can't prep a tunable recipe, arguments with tune, is threshold, and then suggestion. But if you look above, we actually have the threshold, num tump, and the degrees three are all tunable. So this error is actually really annoying because if you fixed it and ran it then, that if you remove this tune, it would come then saying, oh, non tamp doesn't have it. And this should be a lot. So like, it's not the right way of handling it. Our new way of handling is, is we're listing out the steps. So we're saying these steps have these columns, have these arguments set to tune, please fit. And we're doing something at then. At then at the top, number of row that needs tune is more than one. Very fast calculation to uh, find out if this is a problem or not. And then once we're in here, we're doing some things. We are operating on this needs tuning data frame to find out what it needs. The message we're trading it in two parts because the, the way these this list right at the bottom has both like the steps and the columns is hard to do. So we are trading that using the step message. Another nice things we have here is we can add the pluralization. So this question mark S in the curly bread head um, will be added if there's more than one of the quantity we specified earlier. So if there's only one step, it will say the following step has. So this is very neat in that way. All right, and that's everything I have for you. I encourage you to go and look at the CLI package. Thank you.